good morning students today we begin our next essay titled a dissertation on roast pig by charles lamb we have already finished macrae and in hertfordshire this is an essay which is completely different from the first one here we see charles lamb at its at his humorous best it is a kind of a humorous account of this art of roasting pigs so let me first warn you all those people who are completely vegetarians you may feel awkward maybe at some point of time you may feel awkward because there is a kind of a detailed description of how you roast pigs so if you are a vegetarian i would warn you just go through it don't try to imagine all these things it may be sickening for some people who are completely vegetarians because in classes when i uh, deal this in offline classes in all those normal classes i have seen people who are vegetarians who find it hard to digest this piece of essay so this is a warning before the essay otherwise this is a kind of a humorous essay which makes you laugh from the beginning till the end it gives out how this art of roasting pigs started and then he gives out his personal account and he gives out how to uh, he gives out a description of how well can one cook a pig so let us start this piece this humorous piece a dissertation on roast pig so this was published in london magazine in 1822 and I, as i said earlier here we see lamb at his humorous best here we see this abundance of humor it is full of fun from beginning to end there is this uh, description a fanciful description of this origin of the art of roasting a pig and it is so amusingly described so this is basically a humorous account of the origin of mankind's practice of roasting pigs so let us start he begins the essay with a humorous anecdote how this practice of roasting pigs started in primitive times so he starts like this i quote mankind says a chinese manuscript which my friend m was obliging enough to read and explain to me for the first 70000 ages ate their meat raw clawing or biting it from the living animal just as they do in abyssinia to this day so i heard from one of my friends m m is actually his friend thomas manning thomas manning he was a traveler and a linguist so he says that thomas manning had once said that this mankind for around 70000 years before they ate this raw meat either by clawing or biting even from the living animal ജീവിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ മുന്നിൽ കൂടെ പോകുന്ന മൃഗങ്ങളെ ചാടി വീണ് കടിച്ച് പറിച്ച് തിന്നുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്തിരുന്നത് സെവൻറ്റി തൗസൻഡ് ഏജസ് എഗു വി യൂസ് ടു ഈറ്റ് മീറ്റ് റോ ആൻഡ് ഹി സീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഹി കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈവൻ നൗ ഫോളോഡ് ഇൻ റീജിയൻസ് ലൈക്ക് അബിസീനിയ സോ just remember this is a kind of a fanciful description it is something like an imaginary uh, recount of what happened in before 70000 years ago 
and he says that confucius this period is not obscurely hinted at by the great confucius in the second chapter of his mundane mutation where he designates a kind of golden age by term clo fan literally the cook's holiday so it went on so we see this kind of uh, description in the works of even great philosophers like confucius which he had written he had written a work titled mundane mutation so this is also an uh, a title of an imaginary book invented by lamb and he continues so he is reading this thomas manning uh, is talking about a manuscript a chinese manuscript in which there is this description of how how this how this history of he eating meat in human beings got transformed for around 70000 years ago they used to eat the raw meat either by jumping on to a living animal clawing or biting even from a living animal and later he says that the manuscript goes on to say that the art of roasting or rather broiling was accidentally discovered in the manner following this art of roasting pigs was a kind of an accidental discovery and then he starts describing this anecdote which tells us about when and where this art of roasting pigs started so this is a chinese anecdote and it is a story of a father and son ho ti and bo bo ho ti is the father so he was a swine herd so he had uh, he was a person who took care of swine and he had the son bo bo and one day the story goes like this one day this ho ti goes out into the woods to collect woods for his pigs so they were rearing pigs and he went to collect this woods to uh, build the houses for pigs and this boy uh, was given the charge of his cottage he was the eldest son of hoti bobo was the eldest son of hoti and he was a great labberly boy labberly is a clumsy boy and this boy he was very fond of playing with fire and here charles lamb adds he says that as youngers of his age commonly are aa prayathilulla ella kutigalaye pole ഈ പറയുന്ന കുട്ടികളെ നിങ്ങൾ ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചിരുന്നു അവർക്ക് തീ കാണുമ്പോഴേക്കും അവർക്ക് ദേ ഹാവ് ദിസ് ദിസ് ഡിസൈർ ടു ക്യാച്ച് ഇറ്റ് വിത്ത് ദർ ഹാൻഡ്സ് അപ്പോൾ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ദിസ് ബോയ് വാസ് ഓൾസോ ഫോണ്ട് ഓഫ് പ്ലേയിങ് വിത്ത് ഫയർ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് കോട്ടേജ് ഹി വാസ് എ ലോൺ അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് ടൈം ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് പ്ലേയിങ് വിത്ത് ഫയർ ആൻഡ് സഡൻലി സം സ്പാർക്സ് ഓഫ് ഫയർ escape into a bundle of straw straw and this fire began to began to this conflagration moves to every part of that poor mansion so it is mansion basically made of straw why kole undundakikana or cottage aanu so it is why that is why it is mentioned as poor mansion and the whole mansion or the whole cottage in in few seconds it reduced into ashes so this boy who was in charge of this cottage he was playing with fire and the fire um, went out of his control it it burned the whole cottage and then what happened together with the cottage so this cottage as it is say, said there it is a so sorry anti diluvian makeshift of a building you may think it it is something like an anti diluvian building it is something like uh, a prehistoric building 
ഈ പറയുന്ന ഏറ്റവും മിനിമം സാധനങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ടുണ്ടാക്കിയിരുന്ന കൺസ്ട്രക്ട് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു വീട് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വൈ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോൺ ആസ് ആൻറ്റി ഡിലൂവിയൻ ആൻറ്റി ഡിലൂവിയൻ ഇസ് പ്രീ ഹിസ്റ്റോറിക് ആൻഡ് ടുഗെദർ വിത്ത് ദിസ് കോട്ടേജ് വാട്ട് വാസ് മച്ച് മോർ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ഫൈൻ ലിറ്റർ ഓഫ് ന്യൂ ഫാരോഡ് പിക്സ് also went with that what is this fine litter of newly farrowed pigs so this is fine litter it is a fine brood of newly born pigs new farrowed is born not long ago it is infant pigs appo jenichittundayirunna ee parayna kunnu panni kunnigalu mathra avade undayirunnu appo together with this cottage the whole litter of this new farrowed pigs where which were around 9 in number perished they were also dead poor little pigs were also dead so he continues bobo was in uttermost consternation so he was so afraid and consternation he had the surprise and at the same time he was also afraid not so much for the sake of the tenement which his father and he could easily build up again with a few dry branches and the labor of an hour or two at any time as for the loss of the pigs so he had this consternation not because of the fact that the whole house perished he knew that his father and himself he could they could build this house again with a few dry branches and it won't take uh, an hour or two onno rando manikur le construct cheyidu alle tirichu kondu varan nalla reethiyil mathrave ippo sambhavichittullu pakshe ee parayna bobo was more concerned about the loss of the pigs so pigs were something which brought earning to this family so the, he has killed all those pigs so he had this fear what he would tell about this loss not about the destruction of the house but about the loss of the pigs while he was thinking what he should say to his father and wringing his hands over the smoking remnants of untimely sufferers an order as sail this nostrils so he was thinking about what to tell his father about this smoking remnants of all those untimely sufferers he is talking about all those untimely sufferers are those little pigs who lost their lives who have now become smoking remnants smoking remains and at that point of time suddenly an order assailed attacked his nostrils pettanu mookilekku oru oru manam ingane oru oru manam ullilekku adichu ke indeed what could he has this question what could it proceed from where this where does this smell come from this order come from and he knew that it is not from the burnt cottage because it was not the first time he was doing that it was not the first accident uh, it was not the first act of negligence from this unlucky young firebrand he was even known by the name firebrand look at that word it means two things his uh, love for fire and at the same time firebrand it is something like a trouble maker so he knew that he had this uh, strange order attacking his nostrils and he knew that it is not the smell of the burnt cottage ee veedu kattuna manam alla karyam veedu nerthey ee kutti kattichittund appo adu avanunnilla and it is not something of uh, the smell of a burnt herb weed or flower oru poo kattuna endo allengil ee parayna herbs ee parayna straws undana undakkiyekuna angana valinda adu alle herbs undengil adu kattigariyina ende onnu alla but when this order attacked his nostrils he had this premonitory moistening at the same time overflowed his nether lip what does that mean 
pre-monetary moistening overflowed his nether lip. It is something like his, it does mean that his mouth began to water because of this delicious order that came from this uh, uh, came from this smoking remnants pre-monetary moistening it overflowed his nether lip nether is lower lip he began drooling and he knew not what to think he don't he doesn't have an idea what to what is happening what where does this smell come from and next <coughs> sorry he stooped down to feel the pig he felt sorry for the pigs so this is newly farrowed new farrowed pigs newly born pigs so he felt sorry for the pigs and he stooped down to see the condition of the pigs if there were any signs of life in it and he touches these burned pigs to feel to to uh, understand whether any signs of life is still remaining he touches this burned pigs suddenly he burned his fingers and to cool them he applied them in his booby fashion into his mouth we automatically uh, take our fingers to our mouth and his as you remember his fingers had already touched this smoking remnants of this new pharaoh pigs so there are some crumbs of this burnt skin of these pigs in her, in his fingers ingane tottu nokkiyittana appo endathu aa kairinja korchu pigginde korchu baagangal kayil undu adana vaayilekku edukunnu vaayilekku pidikkum velekum he feels like he tasted crackling and he finds it so delicious so delicious that he felt and fumbled at the pig he just um, fell at uh, uh, near that burnt pig and at length broke into a slow understanding that it was the pig that smelled so so suddenly he realized that this delicious order comes from this burnt pigs and later he surrender himself to this newborn pleasure it is something like a new born pleasure and he completely surrender himself to that pleasure he fumbles down there and he start gulping all those burnt skin of pigs that pig he understood that it tasted so delicious and he started tearing up whole handfuls of those burned skin of pigs into and he was cramming it down through his throat ingane vaari valichu thinnu aanu cheythu adu kandond aaru varunu his sire entered that is his father so remember this father has left this cottage in care of his son and he has, he had gone to take woods to make a mast for his pigs but he didn't even look at it he sees only the smoking remnants of his whole house so he comes home and he enters his home in amid this smoking rafters so the whole house as reduced into ashes so he is so angry because he already knew that the uh, responsible person the person who is responsible for this is his eldest son bobo so he comes armed with retributory cudgel retributory cudgel is something like nammalde ammamaru achanmaru kedukkunna karyangal thanne vadi retributory cudgel and finding how affairs stood he began to 
rain blows upon this young rogue's shoulders so he understood what happened there and he started raining blows so he started beating this uh, young monster's shoulders it was something like thick as heel stones those uh, those beating were as thick as heel stones it was so hard but bobo he did not any more than if they had been flies but this boy who was so indulged in eating this uh, scorched skin or the burned skin of pigs he didn't know he didn't even knew he didn't even know the presence of his father and not even the beating of his father it felt like some flies some flies had fallen on his uh, on his shoulders so he couldn't feel anything he couldn't feel anything it felt like flies falling upon his shoulders because he was so indulged in eating this new, uh, this scorched skin of pigs this tickling he says that the tickling pleasure which he experienced in lower regions had rendered him quite careless to any inconvenience he might feel in those remote quarters so he had this tickling pleasure in his stomach ഈ പറയുന്ന പിഗിൻ്റെ ആ ഒരു രുചി പിടിച്ച് വയർ നിറച്ച് നിന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോഴേക്കും ഹി ഫെൽസ് ലൈക്ക് സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് എ ഇൻകൺവീനിയൻസ് ആരോ പുറത്ത് വന്ന് എന്തോ ചെയ്യുന്നു അതൊന്നും ആരും ശ്രദ്ധിക്കുന്നില്ല ബോബോ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കുന്നേയില്ല ബോബോ ഇസ് മോർ ഇൻഡൾജ് ഇൻ ഇൻ ഡെവറിങ് ദാറ്റ് ടിക്ലിങ് പ്ലഷർ സോ വെൻ കമ്പയർ ടു ദാറ്റ് പ്ലഷർ ഓൾ ദോസ് ബീറ്റിങ് ഹി Uh, he uh, had on his shoulders it was something like falling all those flies falling upon his shoulders <coughs> sorry then he starts shouting his father starts shouting he says that you graceless whelp what have you got there devouring so you graceless monster what are you doing there what are you eating there it is not enough that you have burnt me down the three houses with your dog's tricks so he has burned already burnt three houses now i am going to kill you so he is he is there his father is there with so much anger so this is the fourth house he has burned and what does this son reply son says he doesn't say sorry father he says that oh father the pig the pig do come and taste how nice the burnt pigs and hearing that the ears of hoti tingled with horror because he was hearing such objectionable words till then they were eating all those raw meat this son his son has done something which is very which is considered to be forbidden he was eating the meat or in a cooked manner so he his ears started tingling with horror it is something which is very objectionable for them which is very forbidden for them and he started cursing his son and he cursed him he even cursed himself for producing a son like this who was eating burnt pigs bobo then he was not at all concerned about his uh, what his father uh, was thinking and he what he did was he forcefully keeps a piece of burnt pigs in the hands of hoti to onnu magan kelkunnilla magan oru piece vega eduthu achinte kayile vechu kodukunu come father eat it ennu varana kayileku vechu kodukunu eat 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 the burnt pig father only taste on lord ennaan parayunnu with such barbarous ejaculations cramming all the while as if he would chock and hoti was trembling his every joint was trembling 
because he was holding that abominable thing something which is forbidden something which is considered to be detestable so it is something like a criminal act and he was thinking whether to kill his son who had done this unnatural act but he was holding this hot piece of this burnt skin of pigs and as the son did ah magan ee parayna tottu nokkumbo choodaanannu kaanumbolana pettannu kai adu oru valare oru natural idayirunnu reflection act ayirunnu adayadu he takes his hands his fingers to the mouth and this father also does this does this in a similar manner he has this hot uh, meat in his hand so as it had done a son he applied the same remedy that he in his turn tasted some of its flavor he also takes his hand to his mouth and he gets the flavor of the burnt pig who the father also gets the flavor of the burnt pig and he understood that the flavor proved not altogether displeasing to him not altogether displeasing so it is a double a negative not displeasing is completely pleasing to him for the father and in conclusion what happened in conclusion both father and son they sat down to the mess so their whole house is in ashes ningal orka avade veeda muluvan katti karinja nadakkuvana so they sat down near that mess and they start devouring this burnt pig and they never left off till they had finished all that remained of the litter അത് തീരുന്നവരെ അച്ഛനും മകനും കൂടെ ഇരുന്ന് കഴിച്ചു ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൺ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ദിസ് ഹോട്ടി ആസ്റ്റ് ബോബോ ടു കീപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ആസ് എ സീക്രറ്റ് സോ ദിസ് വാസ് എ സീക്രറ്റ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ദ ഫാദർ ആൻഡ് സൺ ബിക്കോസ് ദ ന്യൂ ദാറ്റ് ദ നേബേഴ്സ് വുഡ് സർട്ടൻലി സ്റ്റോൺ ദം ഫോർ ഡൂയിങ് സച്ച് എ ക്രിമിനൽ ആക്ട് for burning the pigs and even more uh, worse is they were devouring they were eating it so they decided to keep it as a secret but they had this intense desire to eat the meat this scorched skin burned pigs again roasted pigs again so what did they do avarku pinneyum thinnano nu aagraham vanna appo avaru endu edu they started burning the cottage and it was said that hotty's cottage was burned down now more frequently than ever aaycha or aaycha aaycha kudumbu avaru cottage kattikan thodangi so sometimes it would break out in broad day others in the night time chalapo avarku ratri dinano nonnal avaru ratri a cottage kattikum nittu katti poye veedu katti poye ennalla aa oru idu baaki neighbors nu koduttu they were actually eating that roasted pig but at one point this terribly terrible mystery was discovered by neighbors and they were taken to this court at pekin avare avare rasyam aalkaram manasilakunu avare trial ee parayna courtilekku kondu vannu and evidence was taken up there that is this new farrowed burned pigs were also taken to the court as an evidence so it was this obnoxious this extremely unpleasant food item was also produced in court ile ee parayna thondi modala nu parayna kondu povunnathu ee parayna burned burned pigs aanu they were uh, it was also taken or produced in court and the verdict was about to be pronounced that is when this this uh, evidence was handed over to the jury and to the judge ellarkum ee parayna evidence kaanikkan kodukkunu it was taken to the box of the court and he handled it and they all handled it appo ellarude kai lekana kodukkunu appo endu sambhavichu 
ആദ്യം മകൻ കൈ തൊട്ടപ്പോഴേക്കും ആ ഒരു അവരുടെ ഒരു റിഫ്ലക്സീവ് ആക്ഷൻ ആയിരുന്നു ഈ പറയുന്ന കൈ ഹി ടേക്സ് ഇസ് ഹാൻഡ്സ് ടു ഇസ് മൗത്ത് ആൻഡ് വി ഗെറ്റ് അ സിമിലർ റിയാക്ഷൻ ഫ്രം ഇസ് ഫാദർ ആൻഡ് ഹിയർ ടു വി ഗെറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഗെറ്റ് ദ സെയിം റിയാക്ഷൻ ഫ്രം ഓൾ ദീസ് മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ജൂറി ഈവൺ ദ ജഡ്ജ് സോ ദേ ഗെറ്റ് ദിസ് എവിഡൻസ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാൻഡ് അവരുടെ കയ്യിലേക്ക് ഈ തൊണ്ടി മുതൽ കിട്ടുമ്പോൾ അതും ചൂടാണ് അതിലേക്ക് കിട്ടുമ്പോഴേക്കും they also they all all handled it and they all burnt their fingers and as bobo and his father had done before it was something like a nature prompting each of them the same remedy ellarku aage oru remedy ariyullu kai polli kaynal endu cheyanam they naturally take it to their own mouth and next to the surprise of the whole court or to the surprise of all those strangers reporters towns folk all present there every one in that jury including the judge they produced a simultaneous verdict of not guilty ivar tettukaralla ennu avaru seri vekkunu kaaryam endanu they also got the taste of this burnt pigs and the most interesting fact is that from then on the judge who was living in a mansion in the city his house began, uh, was in fire this judge who was a shrewd fellow he winked at this manifest iniquity of the decision who understood this injustice of the decision and when the court was dismissed he brought up all the pigs he could have for money and love ayalku shegarikan pattana ella pigs ne kondana ayal veetilekku povunnathu and in a few days time this lordship's town house was also observed to be in fire, on fire korchu divasam kanjane pregum ee parayna judge inde veedil ninnu kattan thodangi and later the thing took wing this news began to spread the news about this taste of this burnt pig and from then on there were fires in every direction ella veedu ninnu kattan thodangi and avade etto kudale chelavulla rendu karyangal it was fuel and pigs grew enormously dear all over the district and insurance offices once and all shut up shop avarku pani illada kari endo the whole city was burning endinana avarku ellarkum they understood the real taste of this burnt pigs and the, these people started building houses with all those flimsy materials people built slight and slight every day avare veedu vekkumbo flimsy aayittulla karyangal kondu veedu vekkan thodangi karyam endanu vegam katti povallo katti poi kaniyil adu aa oru idu parnu they can have this uh, roasted pig and it is said that it was feared that the various signs of architecture would be in long time be lost to the world ഈ പറയുന്ന ഓരോ തവണയും നമ്മളുടെ ഒരു സിവിലൈസേഷൻ ഇതാണ് നമ്മൾ വീടുകൾ എങ്ങനെ വെക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് ആദ്യം നമ്മൾ കല്ലുകൾ കൊണ്ടാണ് വെച്ചിരുന്നത് പിന്നെയാണ് നമ്മൾ പതുക്കെ പതുക്കെ അതിൻ്റെ അകത്ത് ഓരോന്ന് ഓരോന്ന് ആഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നു സിമെൻറ്റ് ആഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നു അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ കൺസ്ട്രക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ കാണുന്ന ലെവലിൽ ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ എത്തിയത് പക്ഷേ ആ ഒരു കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ ദേ ഹാഡ് ദിസ് ഫിയർ ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ മൂവിങ് ബാക്ക്വേഡ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ വെരി സയൻസ് ഓഫ് ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ വിൽ ബി ലോസ്റ്റ് ടു ദ വേൾഡ് ബിക്കോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ആർ ബിൽഡിംഗ് ദിസ് ബിൽഡിംഗ് ദിസ് ഹൗസ് വിത്ത് ഓൾ ദോസ് ഫ്ലിംസി മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് സീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് കണ്ടിന്യൂഡ് ടിൽ ദി ഏജ് ഓഫ് ദ ജോൺ ലോക്ക് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി അൻ ഇമാജിനറി റിക്കൗണ്ട് സോ ഹി സീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് കണ്ടിന്യൂഡ് ടിൽ ദ പീരിയഡ് ഓഫ് ജോൺ ലോക്ക് ജോൺ ലോക്ക് ആസ് യു നോ ഇസ് എ ഫിലോസഫർ ആൻഡ് ലേറ്റർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഡിസ്കവേർഡ് ദാറ്റ് this flesh of swine or flesh of pig can be cooked and it was not a criminal act avada ninnu paduke adu a criminal act alla adu we can cook it and eat it ennalla adilekku varunu and then first began this rude form of gardrion gard gard 
ഗഡ്രായോൺ ഗഡ്രായോൺ ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് എ മെറ്റൽ പ്ലേറ്റ് നമ്മൾ ഗ്രില്ലിംഗ് ഒക്കെ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു മെറ്റൽ പ്ലേറ്റ് ആണ് സോറി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗ്രിഡ് ഗ്രിഡ് ആയൺ ഗ്രിഡ് ആയൺ ഗ്രിഡ് ആയൺ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് എ മെറ്റൽ ഗ്രേറ്റ് വിത്ത് പാരലൽ ഓൾ ദോസ് പാരൽസ് പാരലൽ ബാസ് നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ ഗ്രില്ലിംഗ് ഒക്കെ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നുള്ള സാധനമാണ് ഗ്രിഡ് ആയൺ സോ ഗ്രിഡ് ആയൺ വാസ് ഇൻവെൻറ്റഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് and then came this roasting by the string of spit pitil alling string you see the roast and doing that came a century or two later so according to charles lamb this is how this art of roasting came into being so this is a funny description of how it started we have all those description of of this uh, father and son how they discovered accidentally discovered the taste of pigs and how they together join at the feast of burnt pigs so these are all uh, narrated in a hilarious manner this fun becomes hilarious when we are told that this uh, fires to this cottage now became frequent till ultimately this secret became known to others and uh, it became uh, it is so humorous this account of this trial of father and son judge himself being tem- tempted by this delicious taste of this burnt pig burnt flesh and how he sets fire to his own house his own lordship's house and it is something like moving from funny to hilarious and it becomes boisterous we laugh out loud hearing this anecdote which tells us about the history of of this beginning of roasted pigs so thank you girls please read the whole anecdote if you have any doubts please message me So thank you girls have a nice day